Hey everybody, this is Matt Stopa again, and today we're going to take the third installment of Ruby modules, and specifically we're going to be dealing with Ruby namespacing. Uh, it's a very important part of working with it on a daily basis, and uh, hopefully it will be helpful. Uh, the code again is always on GitHub, so have a look. It, the uh, link will be in the description. Okay, cool. So that being said, uh, let's get into it. Open VI to our namespace.rb. Namespace.rb. Normally, when you work with files, you're opening something up, reading some data from it, and writing it out. But let's just say one day your boss comes along and he says, you know what? We need something that's proprietary. We want to have something called a classified file. And that's going to be our own private thing. That's how we're going to deal with our, you know, opening things on our system. Maybe it'll be encrypted, something like that, right? So you've got this requirement where he tells you you need to create a file class. So you go in and you have this code right here. Like it says class, you create class file and you say open and then you put opening classified file. You know, this is just getting started. Um, and then you say end and and then you create this new file object and you say f.open. So we'll go over here and then we'll run Ruby and then namespace.rb. And oh, there's a problem. It says wrong number of arguments, zero for one to three. And looking at our code again, the reason for that, of course, is because Ruby already has a file class. And so there's a namespace conflict, right? They're both existing in the same place. It's sort of like that law of physics that two objects can't occupy the same space at the same time. Well, in programming, you can't have two classes that are in the same namespace at the same time. So what you can do to get around this is very simple. You use modules, and this is how. So if we go to namespace underscore two, you see what we've done here? We have all the same code, but now we've wrapped cla our class in this classified module. Because, like, again, you know, your boss wanted to get fancy and call it classified, make himself feel like he's a secret agent. So you come down here, it says classified colon colon file dot new. So what, what you're doing here is that, you know, if you would have just said file equals file.new like last time, it would have still assumed, you know, Ruby that is, would have still assumed that you were talking about the regular file class in Ruby. But you needed to specify specifically that you were going to deal with this classified object. So now, basically you're able to do that by saying classified colon colon new. All right. So come over here, and this time we'll run the second one. And if you look, all we're doing, right, is just saying we're printing opening classified file. And now, look, it works. So fantastic. So that's what, this is one of the other benefits of Ruby modules is that it allows you to create these logical separations for yourself. So that not everything, you know, you get to some points in, in programming where you're like well okay this should really be called a node or this should be called a document something like that and you realize well there's gonna be these conflicts and you know sometimes the there's a tendency to well I guess I could just name it you know my node or just something more specific but really you want to put these things under a general umbrella like we're doing here with classified in a sense you're logically organizing it right because now anything that's related to the classified logic is going to exist within classified so you're not gonna have you know somebody's like well I know I got these five classes there's my node and my file and things like that you won't have to hunt around for those things definitely try it out because it's very helpful to actually see it work and play around with it a lot too so we're gonna be showing you another variation as well so we've got this working, but let's just say your boss comes back and he's like, well, you know what? We really need a system class as well. And you realize, well, guess what? There's going to be a conflict there too, right? So you say VI and you open up namespace three. That's what we'll do anyway. And look at what we've got here. So forget this file comment. I'll get back to that in a minute. But we've wrapped the file class in module this classified module but then down here we also have this other class called system 
with a method called info, just saying, you know, we're going to have more system info in the future, but for now, it's just going to say, yeah, the system's looking good. So, if you, as you can see, like, we're using module twice with the same name, and so is that going to be okay? Well, let's check it out. So, we'll run Ruby namespace 3 the RB, and yes, it does work. As long as you specify this module classified, or just any any module with the same name, it's going to pull them all into the same module. So there's not going to be any overwriting of, you know, it's not like when you add system, you're getting rid of file. No, they're both going to exist in there together. And so what that means, and that's why I've got these two comments here, is that these two modules can exist within completely different files. They can be anywhere you like, basically. And as long as they're getting loaded, they're going to execute and they're all going to share that that namespace. So, and you might be thinking, well, that's a little bit weird. Is this actually used in that way? I've not seen it before. Well, the answer is yes. It's used in most large Ruby projects, including Rails. And here's a small example. We'll go into the exceptions.rb file under active resource, and you can check this out in the Rails project as well if you'd like. Uh, but we'll open up that file and look at what we have right at the top. We have this module called active resource, and under it is a class called connection error, which this less than sign means that it inherits from standard error. But what really matters is that this class, connection error, exists under active resource. And this is a great example of why you would actually want to use modules to create your namespacing. Because obviously in a project there could be a lot of different connection errors that you might want to have in the project. But in this case, obviously, you don't want that namespace collision, so you stick it under Active Resource. Now, Active Resource has a connection error that doesn't get in the way of HTTP or whatever there is out there that's also using that same error. So that's it for namespacing, uh, f at least for the first part. I'm also going to have a second part on this showing a lot of the little tricks that you can do and a lot of the other ways that modules are used as far as namespacing goes. But this is kind of gets you the basics, and hopefully it's helpful. Um, so yeah, uh, take care, everybody. We're almost to 2,000 views on the channel, so that's real cool, and keep it coming. And let me know what you guys want. All right, thanks. Bye.